Right, so final talk of the evening. Uh, I promise I'll be quick, just like Doug DV. So hey everyone, I'm Junaid. I'm I work as a software engineer at Atlan, and today I'll be talking about one of the second components that Hans talked about, which is really interesting in Doug DV is using Doug DV as a component in a larger data pipeline. Uh, the pipelines I'll be talking about are primarily Argo workflows. Um, these are Kubernetes native pipelines. So uh, a short intro to Argo workflows. Argo Workflows is a Kubernetes job orchestrator. Uh, you can define your workflows in sort of a YAML based DSL. And then the job orchestrator takes care of uh, running each step as a pod. And then you can build a full DAG of these pods and run your pipelines that way. And Kubernetes takes care of making sure all the resources are allocated and things like that. So um, another cool feature of uh, Argo Workflows is that it has very good support of artifacts on any major cloud object storage. So you can take S3 and you can see in that example there, uh, you could just point to a path inside the pod and uh, Argo workflows will take care of making sure that path is, like the file on that path is written to S3. And then these artifacts can act as inputs or outputs to your um, every stage of your pipeline. So every stage of your pipeline can write artifacts to S3 and read from that. And uh, so a little bit about Atlan. Uh, Atlan is what we call a metadata catalog. So the bread and butter of our platform is to run workflows at a cron schedule, which are connect to a host of data sources and pull in metadata. When I say data sources, I mean data, databases, data warehouses, BI tools, Kafka brokers, and everything in between. So Atlan loves DuckDB. We use it across almost all of our pipelines in some capacity to run analytical workloads. So these pipelines have sort of this architecture where you have a pipeline, which is a bunch of, uh, which is a DAG of pods and in each pod, we run an embedded instance of DuckDB, which constantly queries the S3 bucket to uh, fetch Parquet files. And we make full use of the predicate pushdown feature so that only the required columns are pulled in. And then these pods keep running the analytical workloads and pushing data back to S3, which are picked up by the later steps. So I'll go through an example here. Um, so let's talk about the data. Uh, this, is the, this is the derivation of the TPCDS data set. I generated this using IBS Bench. It's around uh, 100 GBs in memory and after compression, uh, compressed parquet files, it's around 39 GBs. So as you can see, this data is partitioned. You can think of it as any hive partitioned um, data set. So we build, a work, we build a workflow which would look something like this. Uh, we would hand off each parquet chunk to a pod. Um, each chunk is around 3.3 GBs. And then uh, with DuckDB, we, with all the spill to disk features, we can actually set memory limits, thread limits, and then um, we ran aggregate queries, which are basically doing some group buys and uh, sums over the line item and orders table. And this is the performance we have seen in this example, uh, DuckDB, and we compared it to PySpark because that is what we used before we implemented DuckDB in this kind of setup. Uh, DuckDB usually runs uh, around twice as fast as PySpark. The main reason for this is, I think, all the overhead that PySpark requires when you try to initialize it in memory in isolation. So. Some more specs, uh, this benchmark ran on a T3A2X large. It was a single node EKS cluster on which we were running Argo workflows. Uh, this execution time is a mean over five runs. Uh, so yeah, um, building pipelines using this architecture has a lot of benefits, mostly coming from Argo workflows being a very mature job orchestrator. So you can easily build DAGs that have the fan in and fan out architectures. You can also do dynamic resource allocation. So you could have steps before your processing steps that kind of estimate how much resources you would require. And you could use a feature called pod spec patch, which could dynamically set the limits and resources. If you're, a, if you're aware of how resources work in Kubernetes, uh, um, CRDs basically, you could do very robust retry mechanisms. You could build recursive DAGs and things like that. So this combination of Argo workflows, S3, and all the ergonomics that DuckDB offers it builds for a very good stack to like kind of run very lean and very memory efficient uh, data pipelines. And another way we have also kind of leveraged the downstream DuckDB tooling folks, like uh, things like evidence, observable, real data, mother duck, is that that uh, S3 bucket, which has a bunch of parquet files, they can also hold the results of these steps, right? And then you can also build very embeddable BI dashboards something very simple, which is more code first and easier for engineers to use to build internal dashboards on how your performance, how your pipelines are doing, what is the error rate, things like that. So, yep, that's all from my end. Uh, any questions? Thank you.
Are there any questions? Uh, so I just saw the recursive DAGs there. So is it like you have a workflow that solves a problem with recursion? That seems rare. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? And if that's indeed with recursion, then are you going to use the SQL recursion as a replacement of recursive DAG? Thank you. So recursive DAGs are basically, um, so in Argo workflows, the way you run a DAG or a step is you try to define a template and then you can define another template, which is a DAG template, which calls the main template. So the way recursive uh, recursive templates work is you can call the same template from within itself by changing the parameters the same way we do recursive functions. It's more of a feature of the workflow executor than it is for anything related to DuckDB. So you can look it up, uh, it's available and explained well in their docs. But the idea is you could use the same template again and again and create different instances of the pod and with different parameters. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? No? Maybe? Maybe later? Okay, well, uh, let's uh, thank him again. Thank you.